Our last presenter for the day, Aaron Johnson, is with um, Fire Protection Agency. I work with Aaron in the National Fire Protection Association on the NFPA 418, and he does a lot of education and training with uh, multiple agencies in this space. So he's going to talk a little bit about um, the foam fire systems that we deal with and some of the changes that just came down the pike here in the last year as to why we're replacing some of the foam, what's that mean, where do you go for information, and what are some of the comparisons of the foam out there. So Aaron, I see you're online. Uh, can you hear me all right? I can. Awesome. Did you have a presentation? I can't remember. No, uh, today it, it, you know, with the time frame and everything, uh, we'll just have a quick discussion. Um, there's nothing that's going to be overly complicated um, in terms of the fire protection on heliport. So we'll have a discussion. We'll hopefully have a, you know, Q&A and hopefully I can answer any questions that anybody might have today. So um, with all that, thank you, Rex, for inviting me in order to be part of this summit. Um, Nice to have Johnson Controls as, you know, one of the leaders in the industry, especially when it comes to foam fire protection. So it's a pleasure for me to be here today. Hopefully I can answer all your questions. When when we start talking about heliports, when we start talking about fire protection, right? Anything land-based that falls um, under a local authority who requires it is going to follow NFPA 418. Um, within NFPA 418, it states for the firefighting foam agent, that the firefighting foam agent must be number one, UL listed, and number two, must meet the qualifications of MIL spec 24385F. Now, that is the latest Department of Defense military spec for um, AFFF. And the military has a lot of different requirements when it comes to AFFF performance, and it's a higher performing foam. Now, the reason that NFPA 418 went to mil spec foam is because of the crash rescue scenario that it's going to be used at. So if you think of an airport and if we think of ARF trucks, right, at an airport, they fall under FAA regulations and the FAA requires the fact that ARF trucks at an airport must have mil spec approved foam. Well, the same case holds true for a heliport, right? In a crash rescue scenario, the FAA said, you know what? we need mil spec foam so the so the committee for 418 wanted to follow those same guidelines so that's where it sits today uh the latest version of nfpa 418 um has mil spec foam now if the local author fire authority is not following the latest version of nfpa 418 i believe it was two versions previous to to whatever's out now did not require mil spec foam. So that is a somewhat recent change. And what you will find is that not all uh, local authorities having jurisdiction actually follow the most up-to-date version of NFPA guidelines. I'm in the fire industry. I'm a local firefighter. Um, I serve on a department here um, in my hometown. And the fire departments are tradition, right? So sometimes it takes them a little while to catch up to the latest technology. So you may find heliports out there that are grandfathered in that may have um, freeze protected foam, or they may have 1% AFFF, which by the way, is not on the qualified products list. So we just need to be aware of that in terms of designs and what's actually required and kind of the reasons why. So I know um, lately there have been a lot of environmental questions around AFFF what's out there in the marketplace, what is quote unquote safe, right? And, you know, where's the industry going, right? So if we back up a second, we talk about AFFF, okay? When we have, there's certain chemicals within an AFFF and these are the fluorinated chemicals that make an AFFF work. Um, Sometimes in the environment, when it goes through like an environmental breakdown, like let's say we have a discharge, right? And it goes out onto the ground and the environment starts naturally breaking down those components and those chemicals. What happens is as part of that breakdown, a potential product called PFOA, and that might be an acronym that you see in the industry when talking about firefighting foam, and it's called perfluoroalkanoic acid. 
And what it is, is it's bioaccumulative. So if it gets into your bloodstream or sometimes what will happen is that it will get into the um, groundwater supply, right? Um, it can be bioaccumulative in your body, right? So the, so the EPA and local environmental agencies have said, you know what? We need to kind of get rid of that in the industry, right? So those are the older foams. So those are foams prior to, let's say, 2015-ish. Um, anything today, if you were to purchase a triple F foam today, what you will find is that it is the new technology. Now, there are still fluorinated chemicals in it, but with the new technology, you do not get the environmental breakdown that forms PFOA any longer because the, the and this gets into um, organic chemistry a little bit, but the carbon chain is a lot shorter. And when the carbon chain becomes shorter, that allows that PFOA to not be formed in the environment. Um, so as part of the military, right, the mill spec literally requires fluorine to be in the foam. There is a certain segment within that specification of fluorine content in your foam. So they test for it. Now, currently, the military is in progress for testing non-fluorinated type foams that is going to meet the same performance spec that they currently have today. They are not there yet. The technology in the industry is not there yet. So there isn't any type of foam that's on the market today that can still meet the performance of the military that they want and be non-fluorinated. So we're, right now we're kind of in a transition period in the industry. Um, the FAA is also looking at what can they do with fluorinated foams. So I know the FAA is also looking into this to say, okay, are there other options in the marketplace that maybe doesn't meet mil spec, but maybe meets an international um, aviation industry like IKO, right? There's an IKO level B and there's an IKO level C type foam. And international airports, Canada is a great example. Um, airports in Europe is another great example, is that those airports use these IKO rated foams and that is an approval agency. And I think the FAA is starting to look at some of those at the same time because there are non-fluorinated foams that are IKO um, rated and those international airports are using those and have changed their thought process a little bit. So there's definitely some work in the industry that's going on. Um, but as of today, uh, heliports require um, mil spec approved foam because that's what the FAA still has on their regulations. Um, the other thing to consider now for heliports and fire protection and whether or not to use AFFFs or whether or not to use AFFFs is going to be the state that it is being installed in. So number one, let's find out if the FAA has authority over it and if it falls under the FAA. And the reason I say that is because in some states, and I'm gonna use California for an example because they have the most restrictive use of AFFF in the country today. There are a couple of exemptions that you can use um, in the state of California. One of them is um, a refinery, and it has to have a tank size of over something like 20 feet in diameter. Um, we can use uh, transfer stations or blending facilities. And then also, if it's FAA regulated, so think of airports with ARF trucks, right? Those are FAA regulated, so they're still allowed to use AFFF foam in those scenarios. So number one, is the heliport going to be FAA regulated? And if it is, then it falls under the requirements of the exemption. So then you can still use AFFF. If it does not, and they still wanna use AFFF, then the state of California regulations kick in that says you can't use any foams that are AFFF anymore, okay? So in the state of California, again, we have to meet the exemptions that are within the state in order to provide AFFF and to even sell it into the state of California as of, I believe, January of this year. So California, New Hampshire, um, I think Colorado's getting close. Washington State's another one. Um, so it's changing every single day. 
and different states have different regulations. In the state of Wisconsin, absolutely. NFPA 418 regulations, use AFFF, um, it'll be the newer one, but um, that's how we would design a heliport today. In the state of California, a lot more questions have to be asked. So it's definitely something that is dynamic and we're trying to keep up with it as best we can because obviously state regulations change. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely something that's been in the industry for quite a while now, um, but things are really starting to hit the fan because each state is different. So um, just know that when we talk about AFFF fire protection, right, we, are, we absolutely are following NFPA 418. Um, a local fire authority or fire marshal can absolutely change what's in 418 because 418 is a guideline, right, in terms of fire protection but um, then they're taking responsibility for it and they're accepting it, right? So um, if, you know, you can use JCI as a resource for a lot of this information, there is a third party that is that has a lot of information out there and it's an industry-wide collaboration. So it's not just fire protection people, it's fluorochemical manufacturers, right? It's people that are in the industry, the POG industry, and it's called the Firefighting Foam Coalition Organization. And the website address is www.fffc.org. And they keep up with all of the state um, regulations that are out there um, and all of the information that is widely known out in the industry in terms of AFFF and non-fluorinated foam. And they have a lot a lot of information out there that is really good and handy to have. And we use it as well um, as part of our presentation of information, right? We, we're a member of the Firefighting Foam Coalition. So a lot of the information that's there, yeah, we did help develop, we look at, and we still use today. So it's a good third party to look at, not just looking at somebody who manufactures foam, but this is a coalition of industry that has put together the accurate information that is out there today. So please take a look at that website if you guys have any questions whatsoever. Again, a lot of information. We're not going to go into all of it today, but just know that, you know, the environmental concerns around AFFF definitely are becoming more and more prevalent in the marketplace. And one, you know, once the FAA changes their regulations, which I would assume is going to be coming up here in, you know, less than five years. Um, I would assume NFPA 418 is probably gonna follow whatever the FAA does change, but that's up to the committee. And um, those environmental concerns are gonna become more and more prevalent across the United States. So um, Rex has all of my you know, contact information. If there's anything that anybody has questions on or you know, just concerns that they may come, come by as we're doing designs in the field, um, please feel free to contact me, contact Johnson Controls here, um, and we'll be happy to help you out with as much information as we can. Um, we do a lot of designs and design help with engineers and with distributors that are in the fire protection industry. So um, we've seen a lot. We we have a lot of experience with what works and what doesn't work. So absolutely, we you can use us as a resource. And uh, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them as best I can today. Uh, but, you know, based on the conversation with AFFF and the environment, that's about where we stand at a 30,000 foot level. Well, Aaron, I greatly appreciate you getting online today and uh, kind of clearing the uh, air on a somewhat of a complicated issue that uh, we've been paying attention to and continue to pay attention to. Uh, I'd open it up to the floor. If anybody had any particular questions uh, for Aaron, uh, please come off mute and ask them. I did put that uh, website that he talked about, the Firefighting mm -hmm. Phone Coalition, in the chat and have it up on the screen now. Uh, a lot of great information, I think, there for people. 